I want to talk to you guys today about redundancy. Have you guys ever wondered as you build out your smart home how you're going to achieve reliability? What is redundancy and how does it matter to you as a smart home owner? Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm going full super geek on you here today, but the reason for that is because, you know, when we utilize products like you're seeing here on the table, we can run into reliability issues with those. And one of the concepts that can help us deal with that is redundancy. And I'm gonna talk through redundancy and where and when it is best to employ that within your smart home. What is reliability? Well, that's pretty easily defined as the amount of uptime versus the amount of downtime of a system or a component of a system. And so when we talk about reliability in the smart home, it is how often that your devices or your system goes down and you no longer have access to that. And with these products, admittedly so, these products can be less reliable than some of the options you can find, you know, on YouTube, online, and, you know, from different sellers. And one of the easy ways to kind of break out reliability is, there's a couple of YouTubers here who do like super smart homes and they're wiring everything and that naturally has a higher reliability than a wireless system for a number of reasons. But, you know, that trade-off, that becomes the conversation here as far as I'm concerned. Why do I continue to employ these things and not worry? As someone who has worked in in these industrial situations where the ultimate reliability is really key, really critical, and we're talking about incidents that would would make world news uh, if we miss on that reliability thing. So how can I sit here and tell you these products are okay in your home if we're talking about reliability? Well, we have to start with another concept that I have to go full geek with you on, and that's criticality. So. The question I have for you is, is voice control of everything a critical component? Do you need that there all the time? Is control of your light switch through voice or through a routine a critical component? I would challenge you in most cases and say it's not a critical component, but having it work 99.9% .9 of the time is going to be good enough for you as a smart home, home owner to not go and spend thousands of dollars on that 99.99% .99 of the time solution. And that's where that criticality discussion becomes so important. There's not a lot of situations in a home where criticality becomes uh, really prominent or you are able to identify that I need that working a hundred percent of the time and you'll have a couple of those situations and we'll talk about that with the concept of redundancy here as we go but the reliability of most of these components when you look at it truly even though you will see it in the media that uh, nest had an outage last week or they had two outages actually last week and you will see that samsung smart things every once in a while has an outage and the service stops working and you can't access it and you have a real problem in your smart home well there's only certain components that are going to be critical at that moment and otherwise you can live without that voice control you can press the switches that you need to press and if if you do if you have that situation where you don't that's where we're going to talk about redundancy today i'm going to use an example here and these two exam or these two buttons sorry uh, this is a samsung smart things it is a zigbee button that controls actually the studio lighting and this is a nanomo quad from aotech and it is a z-wave button that uh, also i have set up for demo purposes here as i'm doing a series on these products um, I've set it up this to control the studio lighting in here. Now, there are a few differences here and there's a few similarities here that we need to consider when we talk about redundancy. So the first thing is, what are these connected to? What are the required components for each of these systems to 
function or to do their intended function. Now, number one, this is a Zigbee device. So this is operating at 2.4 gigahertz and it is operating over Zigbee and it is connected to a Samsung SmartThings hub. This is a Z-Wave device. So it's operating at a different frequency. It's dependent on your um, your country actually what that's running on but then it is a different protocol it's a different standard but it is connected to that same Samsung smart things hub so in terms of redundancy what I've gained here is different protocols I have not gained a different device and so my reliability of this system still ultimately comes down to that Samsung smart things hub and the lights that are connected to that Samsung smart things hub as well so for that system to operate you know these two have a differential in terms of redundancy so I have partial redundancy I have physical button redundancy I have battery redundancy I have redundancy in terms of different protocols being used but ultimately the the redundancy I don't have is they're connected to the same Samsung SmartThings hub and so if I wanted to really look at this situation and really make this a extremely reliable because this is critical that I have these studio lights turn on like they do well those other components are what you can start to look at for ultimate uh, reliability so number one I have the Hubitat here in my home I could connect one of these devices to the Hubitat that might help me here because then I'd have two different services and the Hubitat is no longer cloud-based or doesn't require any cloud base for the services to all work now I'll tell you with these buttons because they're Z-Wave and Zigbee they'll work no matter what the cloud service is doing at the time uh, that's a common uh, misconception about them the Zigbee and the Z-Wave continues to work without cloud services when you have an automation setup which is how I have these set up so uh, I could connect them to different hubs that's number one and that would change that other component or that critical component so if I had one of those hubs fail on power or just fail entirely I would still have this other thing set up now there's other components to this or other components that we could change to create more redundancy and it can be as simple as the lights so if these are Philips Hue lights so they're also connected to a Philips Hue hub so that's another component in the reliability discussion but what if I had two Wi-Fi lights or two lights that connected directly to my Samsung SmartThings hub well now I have a different set of lights and they have a different set of redundancy components so you can see how if you just continue to break down the situation and I'll give you one more example that ultimately you can create any level of redundancy and therefore reliability that you need with the situation within this existing suite of products you don't really need uh, to look at those thousands and thousands of dollar solutions and the final example I'm going to give you is what if it's a physical light switch and that is the ultimate fallback that I have for this situation because I've deemed it as extremely required or extremely critical in my home and let me take that a little more real world for you if you have a smart home door lock and you're having reliability issues or clearly that's a critical component you don't want that opening when it's not supposed to and you want it to open when you need it to open and if you're having a service issue or a hub issue or there's something there and for some reason that smart home lock or that smart lock will not open when there's no power or some situation well then you need a redundancy there for you and in that situation what I'll tell you is have a key somewhere and make sure that your kid or whomever needs it knows where that is and have it for a different lock or a different entry point into your home not everything can necessarily be smart not every door can necessarily be smart right now if you're not talking about a hundred percent reliable um, door lock situation there so if you can't guarantee it don't do it and that is and I'll tell you this about myself that is one of the reasons I haven't gone out and replaced my thermostat 
It is reliable, it never breaks, it never doesn't work for me, and I can put in all kinds of routines and things. So I've never gone and made the effort to switch to one of the smart home thermostats that I think you would normally think I would. But the reason is I view that as entirely critical. I want it to work all the time. And there is no current reliability or redundancy solution there for some of those options on the market so there's not something I see and I want it to be critical so I haven't changed it as of yet so guys I think that explains some of these concepts for you if you have more questions about this obviously this is a complex topic and I just wanted to touch on it give you an idea of how you can start to employ it in your home but if you have a situation go ahead leave that down below in the comments otherwise I have this smart home basics playlist here that is taking you know my viewers and my subscribership through a number of these types of concepts and is intended to help you really start to design your system or maybe look at some of the components of your system a little differently and also understand where I'm coming from as an automator here and as a smart home person myself so anyways guys thanks for watching and until next time don't hate automate